Aatrox banned away, as you were mentioning. Uh, Karma's going to be taken away here, so now that leaves Sejuani up as a difference from game number one. So, again, Callista available, Sejuani available this time, Corky. No Karma first pick for Showmaker this game. B1 Aatrox? It's Callista. It's a lot of aiming. Right. Speaking, so maybe it is just the Callista, but if they don't feel confident to play into Lucian Nami, they'll just pick it instead. Gonna be the Lucian to come out here. We have actually seen Aiming, I think, have a great performance as the Nami pick away. Whew! That's not one we've seen. Usually the Lucian comes out and they end up picking away the Milio. Now, do they want to go Milio here again? That combo we have not seen had a lot of success. When you go back to like classic Lucian pairings, the Braum is another one, but playing Braum into Nami does not seem like a great time. The Rel, it should be, it should be a no-brainer here. I would be fine with Lee as well. I do trust Lucid on the Lee. Uh, I do not trust him on Maokai, as I'm sure everyone who watched this game will agree. The the Syndra we actually saw earlier today as well. I don't feel like she's in the best of spots, but if you don't want to play Ari. It is, a, it is the type of direction that you can go into as that... Lucian Sona. Oh! Okay, it's gonna Dang. happen. <laughs> All right, so hear me out. Obviously, it's gonna be tough for Nami to reliably find the punish onto Sona. Sona scaling absolutely off the wall, but particularly into compositions that don't have built-in hard engage, like playing into a Nami, your early Q poke can actually be really substantial. So you can actually get uh, with the Q, as well as some empowered orders. Oh, Mila. that that's oh that's ooh. that's not dream. Oh, that okay. I actually would have I would have loved the Nila. I feel like Sona does just kind of fold if you have something that can get on top of her guaranteed. That's not going to be the case. It is the Rel, which is, I'd argue, uh, owner's best pick at the moment. Obviously had an incredible worlds on this pick as well. But now you do have the opportunity for DK to ban out some of these bot lane pairings, and Nami by herself. It's not meta for, for a very good reason. Yeah. Uh, it kind of needs Lucian, or at the very least, Draven to function. And you would imagine, yeah, that's the first Yeah, got it, yep. <laughs> do you think they ban away the Nila after seeing it hovered, or do you go elsewhere? I, I would, because I think there's a lot of stronger AD carries, but I don't think a lot of them work that well with the Nami, if that makes sense. So uh, if they end up picking like a Zaya, for example, I think Zaya is much stronger than Nila is, but we'll see what they end up going for. Maybe like, is it is it Varus? I'm like double checking. hasn't hasn't really been coming up in this <laughs> one. Nami? I guess. Uh. Hmm. Redex and bad though. That's way. <laughs> uh, big thumbs up for that one. 100% yeah. the ride right call. Good idea. I'm like, do you ever go an 80 mid lane that you like Tristana mid and then you go a mage in bot? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like looking at like Seraphine. Sw Nami? I'm looking at Swain or something. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'm really Ari. Yeah, that, uh, Ari. Ari's great. Strong champion. Oh god. Well, that is a showmaker special. And it might just be picked up here, although I didn't I didn't mind the Syndra personally, but this is much more in line with what Showmaker loves to do. Annie, this has actually started to make a comeback. Yeah. I was I was actually looking towards Lysandra specifically. Obviously, has been a traditional counter pick towards the Ari for locking her down, but Annie does the same thing, locks down reliably. And I I gotta say, the idea of trying to face Annie and Sona in a team fight is not that's not a that's not a good time as Kingen, he has he has three champions. Aatrox, Renekton, and Nar, and then Orn, but Orn isn't a thing, especially not with all the Aatrox blinds. What does Guma play? Is it just Nila? <laughs> Caitlyn or Ezreal? Not sure how I feel about Caitlyn Nami. I you know it's I don't think it's terrible. If you ever hit a bubble, you can follow up easily. Guma obviously is a really good Caitlyn player. I'm just worried about the mid game because Lucian, his ability to just dash on top of you, 
and just blow you up in a matter of seconds as Kate, I think is a little bit scary. I think it's pretty fun that T1 didn't just select a handshake. You know, they have really thrown a wrench into this draft entirely by picking the Nami away. And generally, it would just be like, okay, well, we're just going to play Draven and, you know, just do whatever and maybe it's Lucian Melio, but we get to see some new stuff coming yep. out here because of all this. I would have I would have loved to just pick Draven, though, because I feel like then, like, playing Draven, Nami into Sona seems like a best-case scenario. And more importantly, <laughs> there were, like, four junglers still up. Like, Rel obviously is the best one, but I think yeah. both Maokai and Sejuani were still open. And if they bend those two away, then... That gives you a lot of breathing room in other uh, in other departments. But we get a fun draft, fellas, and that's worth something. Yeah. We get, we get Sona, we get Annie, D-plus, at the forefront of the meta development. Are they good? I, I don't know. We'll see. I, I thought they were good last game, and then they obviously uh, didn't, didn't manage to, to pull through. Yeah. Uh, very curious about the bottom lane, Caitlyn Nami. Uh, in this one, personally, as uh, this time aiming will get a chance to play Lucian. These two eighty carries both love that pick as we hop out of the rift for game two. D plus Kia, I know, do it, said. D plus Kia, fighting. Yeah, yeah. D one, I know, do it, said. D one, fighting. Yeah. The classic. Thank you. Both, both ends of yeah. the register. Uh, the fans are out in force. Uh, hopefully they will actually be soon enough. We are fans of League of Legends. True. And we did the fan chance. So, it counts. He loved oh, is he just going, going to go Lethality? Yeah. That makes sense, actually. There's no real front line on the enemy team. If you get a lead on Lethality, Kate in particular, it can be something really something. something. Could it, of course, also be just for the early trading? But generally, with Halo Blades, I would imagine that you want to look towards specifically Lethality. Lethal Tempo on Caitlyn just feels so insanely strong when you get to the later stages of the game. Caria is in mid, helping with the trade. Look at that. <laughs> Already winning lane. Wow. GG. Showmaker going for the early E, as you do. But yeah, the first few trades not going to be very fun do see here unsurprisingly a lot of scorching going on pta also for aiming not playing with nami we generally see lucians go for this rune obviously able to proc it really really quickly i i want to see this bot lane i want to see what, I, what what's happening there yeah kellen has not played this pick this year and so far it looks like this is going pretty well for uh the caitlin nami Caitlyn still, just in her own right, should be able to control the lane early on. As it has been exactly 356 days since Kellen himself won against Humble Life Esports Life at the time. As they hit level two and can't quite hit much afterwards. He is a real enchanter enjoyer, I think, Kellen. Yeah. Was, was at uh, once upon a time also contesting for the title of our best Renata, but in general, I think his worst performances have been on, not that they, uh, these are times where he's good in engage reports, but really uh, his world's performance, I think really was to stand out in unfortunately a negative sense mm. as Guma, he doesn't pick Caitlyn often, but when he does, it he is. He goes lethality and he owns the lane. I, I guess, uh, he does have a 92% win rate, that ain't bad. I wonder where his one loss happened. I don't know, unfortunately. I wish I did, that would be so cool. If I just like, yeah. No. Feels like probably some lane where a Caitlyn Lux lane went wrong and I I can only imagine behind. it's like against Nongshim and it's Jiwu on Neil. Like something like yeah. I don't, there's no way that they pick Caitlyn against like Gen G and then lose, right? I feel like that is a very specific type of scenario is yeah. already the early levels feeling great here for the Caitlyn Nami. First play picked up. Right on track and Kellen able to get anything going here early on possible fight here is ooh, lucid does oh, get that spotted was close. <laughs> could have been big but yeah. he's gonna get spotted here faker's already tp'd so right now sitting on a pretty big health lead 
We'll see if Lucid is able to actually take this away. It does have a smite available, and owner doesn't, so it should be completely fine. We'll just take that, and it'll be an even trade. Doesn't spot the ward. Yep, just run around securing Scuttle Crabs. Nice little dodge Rooney from Kingen, but the house is going to miss. Big wave in his favor, so Zayus not going to continue that trade. Started off pretty well. Wonder what the build from Kalan is going to be as well. If he's going to go for just very early utility, like he did with the Melio in the last game. As I love personally having an exhaust um, build into my champion's kit, as we saw there. <laughs> really happy you went for this Sona skin as well, because it really doesn't get more obvious in terms of finding yourself uh, an indicator than damage down. So with yeah. Sona. If you get uh, the Empowered Auto on her, I think it's her W, w. Yeah, yeah, then the damage reduction is kind of insane. It's large and in charge sometimes as well. Uh, Guma and Karia just going to back. Looks like Karia is having second thoughts, though. Owner, meanwhile, just doing the Void Grubs. I almost called them the Scuttle Crabs. I mean, it's pretty simple. Close enough. Oh. oh, he smited it away. After the little might denied him the Q steal, and Owner will just take two and go away. Lucid got his one. That's all that you'd really want to ensure. We've still not seen the grubs be really good. If we had a top lane split push meta, I feel like they would be much more important, but that's not really how the game is played. All centered around team fights and dragon fights and baron fights, so I'm gonna hold on to that. Kingen picked up an early call. And as one of our big Gnar enjoyers is gonna try and look to at least maintain prio in this lane, but as we have seen last game, again, yet another piece of evidence as to why shutting down Zeus on Atrox just isn't really a thing, unfortunately. I mean, at the end of the day, unless you fall behind, like, very far, we're talking, like, two kills, 20 farm. I mean, he was pretty close to that, that in that, the last I game. I mean, he was, though. But, <laughs> yeah, I guess even then, you know, you just press your Q3 onto the AD carry, and it's all good. I mean, that's just the Aatrox way. The fact that you can have such survivability while doing an intense amount of damage is, uh, allows him to stay relevant. Cre on yeah. just one item. Credit where credit is due. Zeus was also the best at actual Lafell of the Aatrox, you know, the Duskblade Aatrox. Ooh, flash forward. The W stun comes through, and Faker trying to get away. He's not going to be able to. Lucid picks up first blood. His owner gets followed up on, but he will get away. Credit to Showmaker for setting that trade up. Ooh, wonder if the burn would have been enough, but Lucid there flashes over the Q to ensure that they actually get the lockdown. And Faker, of course, being Ari, is highly mobile, so they wanted to just ensure that they did, in fact, get the kill. As we do, in fact, have confirmation here that it is the Dirk. And if it was just a Dirk I, I, and, and Lethal Tempo, I would imagine it's just for laning power. As we take another look, that's some any gameplay. All right, then. <laughs> He did press R. He pressed R with full stacks. And Faker's like, it's fine. I, I need these minions. It's fine. I really do. And then Flash, uh, I think Flash W, and then here as well. Yeah, actually, I, I don't think he would have died. So nicely done. Otherwise, he could have made his way over the wall. A little moment of, uh, of redemption there for Lucid. That's the Kalan. bubble. Ooh, Kalan is low. Owner. Level up. If he can get it done. The Q is going to miss. Flash is the jump. The calling that is going to push them away. Kellen now down a flash and a heal. Are you trading the heal, I suppose? Oh, and because of the Faker roam and the opportunity for a redive, they probably have to vacate the area or lose it is towards the top side of the map. But hey, at least they survived the initial blow. They're able to catch the wave, and it looks like T1 doesn't want to risk it. Tier also picked up by Kellen. This is uh, something that we see very often on Sona. Don't even necessarily need to build it into anything, but their mana cost can be quite rough to deal with particularly in the early game before you get any mana regen items. I'm gonna try and be able to spam as much as possible as we do have Lucid towards the top side of King and might be looking for an extended play. Yeah, he definitely is trying to get something done. Owner's on the way as well, but pretty far away at this point. Zeus, World Ender, gonna push them away, just trying to buy time for Owner to get over. And with the flash on the queue, he's just gonna say, never mind, not gonna take any chances. Lane's going decently enough. 
I'll just accept my flash. A nice attempt there from DK. They do get the flash out of it, so successful play. Wave state is a little bit rough here, but King and should be able to TP back with a large amount of money in his pocket. And if he spends that, he should be fine and able to fix it. Might be an opportunity for owner here, though, to try and punish this Gnar. And if you immediately get the flash out of him, could be a big win. As really crisp timing here from the Rel. Out comes through, and he elects not to flash just yet. Let's see if he can survive. He's going to flash the Q3, and that will be enough. Keeps a decent health bar as well, and now with owner on the top side of the map, they're just going to take the streak. It's going to be the Drake here for DK. So flash for flash in the longer trade towards the top end of the map. A Showmaker, again, hits Faker with the outplay yeah. of stat checking. As all oh, they do really need this Drake, and Lucid needs to be a little bit careful. There's but this no is, way. imagine, that's the point. Imagine if that was Lucian. And you just go in and you like, hunt it. Does it? no, can't do. Can't do that. Drake will get taken as Kellen takes a bullet for aiming. Yeah. Not sure how much longer in the game he's going to be able to do that, though, because once the Caitlyn builds a couple items that are lethality, oh, yeah. uh, that's going to hurt a lot if you have no armor. Lucid continuing to stick around. The dash onto the trap, not, not the play I was looking for in this game. Not ideal, Feldes. But that is going to get his cleanse away as Lucid once again just being a annoying little Lee Sin, let's say. Here comes the world ender, Zeus. It's a, it's a wave clear roll. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's kind of unfortunate that oh, all the minions get feared away. Yes, six. Uh, he's going to miss here from Lucid, and he's up two levels somehow. Not sure how he managed that. But, uh. Will Faker? Nice trade there. Big chunk. Well, I say trade. Showmaker didn't do anything back. Yeah, I'm sure you guys remember in the past, uh, the Annie meta was you cast Tibbers on them so that they don't get to play the game. Uh, has gotten nerfed quite a bit since those days. She fell out of the meta. But now Ari's back, and I suppose now Annie is back. It's just back to Annie Ari every game. Yep. If we ban Oriana. Look at that. Guma hasn't backed yet, so I think otherwise that might chunk a whole lot more. One of the LCK Observers keys, and also a really big fan, as Lucid might extend this play. Yeah, I mean, they're <laughs> going to be on a pretty long chase. This is a, essentially a 1v1, and yes, we have a TP coming in. Owner trying to flash away from this one, but here comes Showmaker. A double stun comes in from the Timbers. Gives them a chance to extend the play. The Q, it lands with the charm. is huge from the side of Faker, as Lucid will be forced to flash on in to continue that one. It looked insanely cool. It was, but it's not going to save his support as Lucid can just run away from that one. They might look for a dive in Guma here. Faker can't join. Oh, never mind. He's TPing in. Yeah, he's going to TP, and that is going to get them away for now. We got Spirit Rush coming on in. Faker, let's see how far he wants to go. Nice. Lucid is here. The kick comes in, and Guma's just left out to dry. They didn't know that Lucid was still in the bottom side of the map, and now it is so much worse as DK going to pick up so much gold in the bottom lane with this play. Well, after last game, I'm not making any grand statements, but that's looking damn good for <laughs> DK Veldes, as it all starts off with Owner going for an ill-advised invade, and it snowballs into so much more as Kingen doesn't have his flash this time around. And he doesn't have his hop either. He's in a lot of trouble. He's going to dodge the first part. He's trying to dodge the Q, and he will. No. He's running so fast on this little mini Nar, but it's not going to matter at the end of the day. Oh, hats off. Hats off. Nice try. So close. Uh, not good enough, unfortunately. Very important gank there because there was no point of hope for T1 on the map, and now there's topside. So that's that's something uh, Zeus <laughs> does actually get. Did you notice, by the way, Owner put his Knight's Val on the Aatrox? <laughs> that actually is a... He knows oh, where his bread is Yeah, buttered. no, no, uh, great choice. Obviously, might be, might be swapping it around, but right now, okay, we, we go take another look at this. So, Owner is invading. I, I imagine he was expecting Lucid to go toward the top side of the map, and his camps are up there as well. And the TP comes in, and there is no counterplay. I don't know who plays that ward. Might have been Callum, might have been Lucid, but that ward absolutely game-changing. Um, that charm was slick. Yeah, that charm faker was. The charms have been really on point. Yeah. 
but it all it does is, is extends the play, force the flash. Uh -oh, oh, bubble, he is dead. Yep. And that's it. <laughs> that's all we got to the see. Bubble, and he's dead. And he is very unfortunate there for Kellen. Sona does not give you a lot of room for mistakes as Lucid. No. Okay, trying to make another play. He does have the dragon kick. Just trying to make his presence known, maybe stop him from taking the turret, as it has been chunked out quite a bit already in this game. Both these junglers really get the opposite experience, where now it's owner that doesn't get anything, <laughs> and he's just sitting on Knight's Vow. Kellen ends up going down there to the bubble and then gets chunked, but they feel relatively safe still, because I think Kellen still has his ultimate available, as does aiming. And in the 2v2 in particular, all oh, it's going to just be able to, yeah, beautiful timing on the bubble. And the Actually that just through, bubbled and dead. Yep, very straightforward. Well, he, he, he had that to do a little bit of damage initially. Yeah. As opportunity, now done for Guma. Like, his ults are really going to sting. That said, though, Lucid is very far ahead of the curve, and he if he ends up building, like, a ton of health, the Lethality, Caitlyn ults really aren't going to be as big a uh, problem, especially with Showmaker having his E, uh, Lucid himself being able to shield and then Kellen existing. And you know what? A single death on a Sona lane. I think you'll sign up for that. Hey. Ox. And uh, Kingen's in a lot of trouble here, although it is carry uh, as it, he comes forward. But Showmaker's here to turn around the trade. Gets there at the perfect timing. Not sure how he sniffed that one out, but excellently done. And that is going to stop T1's dive. They put an end to the Aatrox's reign for now. We, we know he o they only delay the For inevitable. Now. But really bigly, uh, really big roam there from, from <laughs> Show. <laughs> Very bigly roam. Yes. Oh, my, uh, my language uh, today is not really on point. One of my friends from the Netherlands is over, and I actually think that that, that really yeah. got me. You know, I, I swamped away from English for a little bit. And it's, that was uh, it. That was the end. <laughs> it was just immediately <laughs> over as the Herald gets picked up here. Showmaker? Yeah, owner. He does have Faker nearby. Charm, Max Reign's gonna hit Lucid, but they do not want to fight this. No. So, just gonna get him out of dodge. And he should be okay. As we as we, as we, we chill a little bit, I gotta say, when it comes to compositions that enjoy Camtech Drakes, at least individual ones, DK is looking great. I thought they had a lot of shielding in their last one, but this one, you get to use the healing power as well. By a wow. pretty, I know, by a pretty substantial amount. The core thing, though, and especially with last game fresh in our minds, is can DK actually play out the game clean enough? Can they actually? Because, because I do think that Annie and Lee in particular really excel in these type of messy, early, scrappy fights where yeah. you get to, uh, and Ari does as well, but Rel really doesn't. Rel is there for the five v five for the reliable engage. So. That struggle, I think, isn't too surprising. As we take another look, King and absorbing so much pressure here, able to hop over, doesn't get hit by the bubble, and then Showmaker shows up perfectly in time. Uh, but but I, I, I am still worried. The big thing for me is that Showmaker, it really, when you look at it, is, is the engage. Like, Flash Tibbers is actually probably going to be how they start fights. Yeah, or like flank kicks from Lucy yeah, or something, or, you know? or a big Meganar, you know, like there's, yeah. but that, you're you're a lot more reliant, and with Showmaker, all you need is flash. Like, obviously, Kellen can flash ult, but I feel like all the players in this game should be good enough to not get hit by that. Yeah, I, I feel like teams just got sick of Vine, and they were like, no, we're just going to ban that every game now. And so and you, eh. you don't get to point and click from the jungle anymore. <laughs> and Nautilus was <laughs> looked over this time. And now, instead, Annie's back. Yeah. Malignance is a great item for her, though, to be fair. It is. It, uh, it does have a nice amount of synergy. Nice angle here on to Showmaker, but Faker took so much damage. The bubble is huge from the side of carry. He can't take him down. It's now Guma in a lot of trouble. Nicely done with the net, but I don't know if he's getting out of here. Just going to hold on to his flash for quite a long period of time. They finally do take him out. They give Kellen the kill. I think they wanted to get uh, the actual to carry. The re-engage! Oh boy, Showmaker going way too close to the sun. And down he will go. They're trying to go for a dive here. The Q is going to go through the gold post on that one. The health bars are low. Zayus does FTP though. I think T1 might be looking for a turn. 
I mean, there's pretty high health bars here on the side of DK, but there's just zero wave. So maybe, maybe they want to just bait out TP. Because while this is happening, Kingen is just going to get at least one turret, possibly two. Kalin still has heal available as well. He's standing there menacingly. <laughs> oh, he's actually going to go in. Lucid, what's going on? Uh, he's going to have a little bit of support from his team, and he has a Sona nearby. So, again, I suppose just trying to keep him around. But that one looked much more dangerous than I was supposing he was actually going to go for. Yeah, really taking some risks with that one, but there's not enough cooldowns available on T1 to actually take him down. And that's two turrets going the way of the plus, about 40 seconds on the timer. Looking at the cooldowns used, Showmaker initially plays this amazingly with the Rylice, he actually is surprisingly tanky. The big thing here is that because he burst down Faker, Faker doesn't actually get to do anything meaningful damage in the play, meaning that there's Rel and Nami. Neither of which are going to do a whole lot. Kellen, a uh, <laughs> bit of a tragic <laughs> ultimate on that one, but it doesn't end up it's mattering. Fine. Then, then here, like Lucid didn't take that kill to give it the aiming, and then Kellen takes it, which I think is very funny. And then here, really nicely done by owner Showmaker without his flash, can't be that far up. Gets punished, which is good on them. And now, 3k gold deficit. Yeah. Two items spiked on for aiming. Showmaker, I think, was just a bit overexcited, you know? He does do that. A lot of low health bars. He's like, I'm Annie. I can press my Q onto anyone. They're probably going to get very low. Oh, look at this angle. Perfect from the side of Lucid. They just did not see him. Owner is quite tanky. The stuns are coming through. And the turn, maybe, from Zeus and the TP as a ton of Ari damage is coming out here. Showmaker gets turned up. Zeus, oh no, he's getting some reset. And he eventually is going to be taken out. A very messy fight as Faker getting into that back line, takes out another, puts the charm down, but is not long for the world. Went superbly deep on that one. And Guma and Carrier are like, guys, <laughs> we're just going to run away from this, I guess. Almost felt like we'd hit the ball. Oh! All right, there we go. Bubble comes in, as well as a trap, but Lucid gets away. He does push them away for now. That is Harold being used here. We'll see if anyone can make it back Shouldn't in time. Shouldn't you just wrote that? Uh, yeah, it would have been way faster. Yeah. Maybe it auto, I, I don't know. Maybe it like auto timed out. And I, I still feel like I should have wrote it and it would have been a lot faster. TP coming in. They don't have any vision, so they want to make sure that they don't get stoned. There is a rail, but- T1 is like, yeah, we don't not, care about that actually. Yeah, they're not positioned. Gonna and now, now they're gonna, yeah. Dragon is gonna get taken. Um. <laughs> is he just fine as well? Is he just gonna run away now? Yeah, no, he's just he's peaceing out. It's it's fine. You know, if he crashed into the mid turret, he might just get stunned up by Sona or something, and then he doesn't know where the rest of the team is. So, the whole idea initially, I think, is the big issue. The rest of it, I I can't just for comedic effect. I can't believe that they almost pulled off this fight as well. So this starts off with an attempt at pick on Owner, but because he actually gets a magnet storm off, he gets way tankier, and then Zayas as he often does, able to get so much damage done. Amy doesn't get that much done with the calling, and crucially here, Zayas gets the double reset, and that's where you're like, oh boy, especially with Faker also uh -oh. being able to play as aggressive. Okay, he's dead. Uh, being able to play as aggressively <laughs> as he does on the Ari, if he gets any assists, ended up being, uh, being, I think, really big at the beginning of that fight, but fortunately for DK, they do have enough of a topside lead that it didn't end up matter for now. For, for now. now. Because, yeah. yes, you killed Zeus there inside. Let that, d don't let that distract you from the fact that at any given point, that man still has way too much power on the Aatrox. Now, though, soul points taken. And this, this reminds me of last game, Valdez. It I, does. I am. I, I, if you're a T1 fan, you're like, Puh, this, is, this is nothing. 2K gold depth. It's a Chemtech Comfort soul. zone. Yeah. Oh, who cares? And uh, do you know to those people I say, fair enough. Fair Watch enough. T1, just get Baron and then win the game. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, well, let's take a look at the, how this happened first. Just that's unfortunate so timing. Sad. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he leaves the bush right as they round the corner. Yeah. What are you going to do? Unfortunate. Unlucky. Even the world's finals MVP has those moments. So when it happens to you in solo queue, you know it, it can happen to anyone. Ow. That is a lot of lot of hurt coming through. Morello's done now for Showmaker. I'd say a pretty good itemization into the Aatrox. Yeah, Everyone I don't, else I don't, I don't doesn't matter. It. 
just deal with the Aatrox and maybe you've got a chance. Yeah, I'm uh, yeah. I'm on board as well. Because at the end of the day, so. you know, you don't even have that smolder composition. And I do think that DK are playing this one a little bit more balanced. You know, a lot less mistakes from oh, Lucid, yeah. from aiming, I suppose. I mean, he did get caught out the one time, but in this one, it does feel like they are playing with their lead a bit better. Yeah, and man. it is unfortunate for them that they don't have a, a good Drake once again. If only we could have known Lucid was good at carries instead of tanks. If only we had multiple seasons of Challenger. <laughs> I mean, to I, be fair, he came into the LCK right when tank meta was at its prime, and yeah. he tried to play like Vi and Lucian, or Lee Sin rather, and he didn't look that great. So I think the team was like, ah, can which, you just play tanks fair. for us? I also think that uh, aiming has looked a lot better on specific picks. I think his Lucian was like something Lucian? That, we, yeah. Yeah, that we saw last week. He actually was able to really perform well on. Uh, <laughs> Megacode! Where did he come from? Even Jonah Strong missed that one. Like, came out of the red buff. But yeah, it was just the Megacone, I'd imagine. In goes loose, and the kick is not enough. That, that's a real, my guy, as he is just going to be taken out here. And once again, Lucid going to get caught out. And with the Baron available, doesn't look like T1 wants to go for it just yet. That one's on me. I cursed it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's 100% on me. That's how, oh, that's how it starts, Velvus. And yeah, once again, we see this uh, Knight's Val Thornmail build where it just makes these 80 junglers a lot less effective into you. Very funny start of the fight, though, with Showmaker going in. Lucid, display, very excusable. Actually going back in on that queue, not at all. Uh, <laughs> that part, not no. Even, not, e not even a little bit. It was bit. fine until it wasn't. Great, great wave as well there from carry out to ensure, because if Showmaker and Kalen can rotate up, then obviously the play is completely fine. The only way you get out of that is if they like flash over the wave, which no, absolutely not. Uh, so big mistake from Lucid, ends up giving up his bounty, but no Baron taken this time around because the rest of DK is still there. And Look at the damage taken. Uh, that doesn't surprise Lucid me. is so far ahead of everybody else. He's just trying to get the max oh, value no. out of the imminent soul. Okay, that's what he's doing. Yeah. Low health. That's where you want to be. They're, they're going to get us up. I don't the think healing I don't. power works on Sunder Sky, right? It does, yeah. Yeah. It's actually quite good. Value. As, oh, they are not. Uh, never mind. They're not giving up all for an item spike for Zayas. I've seen this one before, Vel. Oh, as. boy. Here we go again. Uh, oh boy, and aiming is in so much trouble. Oh no, he's just gonna get 100 to zero. The engage was so clean from Faker and Owner. They put one and one together, and now it's just a 5v3. Everybody else on the side of DK just running away. As D, uh, T1, they should be able to take down this Drake, and maybe just run straight at the Baron. I will be curious to see what they do with this lead now. What if I just don't say nice things about DK anymore? Maybe that's it. I praised yeah. aiming as well. That's nah, on me. We'll see. 10 seconds on Kellen. Health bars for T1 are all full. They're down a couple of cooldowns, but they're going to start the Nash. This is a nightmare is scenario fun. for DK. I don't think Lucid can get anywhere near this pit with everyone still there. There's no Mega. Oh, there is a Mega Narbar. Never mind. King going to go Mega. That might be enough to dissuade them, actually. Wow. C1 pulling off a Baron. Never thought I'd see today. Yeah, with a Rel as well, but I guess with the threat of Meganar. Let, let's look at this engage. I mean, aiming just way too far forward. They don't even hit the charm. Oh, they don't they're, even need it. Owner doesn't miss his circle, though. And uh, they're doing the Baron. They know this is happening. T1 trying to run over here. DK maybe a bit this of desperation, but they do have a lot of damage. Have to kick one. her out. Have to kick her out. Nope, just go for the flip. Okay, let's see who does pick it up. It's Rel. Who could have seen that coming? As now, aiming's going to go down, and the Desperation Baron attempt is not going to work in favor of DK, and T1 are rolling them. Very nice dodge on the Megan R, as down will go King into about a bajillion CCs. As, wow. T1 right back in the driver's seat. DK. Perfectly according to plan, Veldes. Woo! Who could have seen it coming? DK, fumble back-to-back -back plays. Don't get the soul. Don't get the Baron. Uh, I, 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 I don't think they can end on this wave, but they're gonna try. <laughs> they're gonna try. 
And, Actually, uh, okay, Kingen's not here. I think that might be it. Kellen doesn't have his ultimate. Uh, looks like maybe they're not going to try. Kellen does come out. Pushes them away. Oh, the deep flank. The deep TP flank. The charm is going to miss. They don't know. Look at the low health oh, bars here. Showmaker. He's going to look for the angle. Dodges a lot of CC, but Zeus very scary. He gets hit by the charm, and Showmaker goes down. And Zeus, he lives through so much. Even with the soda stun coming out, it does not matter. Hey, Trox, it's pretty good. Lucid goes in. Forgot there was an Ami on the team. Uh, Honor also goes in. Forgot there was a DK there. I'm losing it, Chronicler. This game is just off the rails. I didn't know KT was playing today, Veldes, but uh, that's, that's kind of what, what it's feeling like right now. If you put DK and then T1 yes. K T no, 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 no. If you, what? If you flip DK, it's KD. KD, KT. KD, KT. There you go. There you go. Figured it uh, out. So I, someone needs to zone. Rel, you're never winning the flip. It's Faker, actually. All the credit goes to him. He buys attention. He goes in. Then stopwatches. No one can, can get to him. Uh, then, obviously, you're going to lose the 50-50 because it's Rel, which I feel like at this point we, we have set too many a time. And then here, really big charm. Showmaker does actually end up dying to Faker, finding that angle, because otherwise, if he gets some of those spell rotation off, at least he would kill Owner. Then, uh, Lefel the Aatrox is thumbs up. Uh, Lucid going in here, absolutely no. I think he's trying to up that damage taken graph, but should have flashed before he gets hit, uh, hit by the it worked. tidal wave there. Well, it, it technically it if did. If that's what he's trying, it worked. The big difference with this game and the previous one, though, is that the gold lead right now is not yet insurmountable. So maybe not they can, true. maybe they can, they can come back. I, I, who am I kidding? Say this is failed. Like this is. Yep, he's also got. QSS. Yeah, he had it. He had it. Uh, QSS and that's what yeah. I was actually like. Or it might have been the kills, and maybe he got now both QSS and the kills, just to make sure. Why not more? Why not more? Why not both? Sure. Might I interest you in Lethal the Aatrox with four Kentek? Oh, am no, I kidding? The game's not gonna last that long. We're, we're not getting there. Chronicle. We're not getting there. It's not gonna happen. Man, I thought we were gonna have a a back and forth series. We got pretty close. Well, the games were. DK actually. almost won game one, and then they didn't. They were winning pretty hard in game two, and now they're not. It's pretty rough. It's pretty rough stuff for them. And T1 immediately, I mean. King and no. They set it on yeah. the space. You give them an inch. A top two team in the LCK will take advantage of it. Meganar is going to help out. Nice kick comes in onto Faker, and they do alley-oop him the bait. Wait, was that on purpose? Uh, I, I hope not. That's way too risky. But maybe they can try and contest <laughs> now. My, probably not. Still don't have vision at all. But they can probably try and shove through mid and maybe turn it into something. Faker still 40 seconds on the clock before he's back. This Drake, definitely a foregone conclusion. <laughs> There's no farm. Lucid really just desperately trying to get back some experience as the observers highlighted just now production. And currently is behind on experience. Yeah. If you take the threat buff, that would be nice. Uh, owner's there. I'm not sure well. if they will. Although, he, yeah, uh, don't give your life for a red buff. That's never. I remember hard. a certain peanut in that same spot. <laughs> I do not want to. Earlier today. <laughs> this Guma build as well, man. Look how goofy it is. It's just Lethality and Collector. As. Well, actually, you know what? Based on Luce's positioning, I actually think it was a bait. I take it back. It's like a half bait, uh, you know? If they send five people, the, the play doesn't work and you lose the game. But yeah. it did. So, good enough. Close enough. Sh so, DK wouldn't try to flip Baron again, right? I don't think that the control to pull that off necessarily you know, right I, now. I think they would, actually. No, T1 should flip Baron because they have. No, well. I think DK would flip Baron. Oh, again? Yeah. Huh. Just, just play just, it better than the first Oh, yes, play it better. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Just hit your smite, Lucid. It was Come just on. an execution. Yeah, 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 yeah. Surely. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it should my nose. We, we're kind of... By the way, 
Note that Owner did not change his Knight's Vow at any point in this game. <laughs> no, he shouldn't! It has stayed on Zeus yeah, the time. He's the carry! Guma, you know, he'll do his little poke thing and he'll be... He'll sting like a bee and do that kind of thing. But Zeus is... He'll press R. He is the team fight carry at this point in time. Not to say that Guma isn't fed, because he is. But, um... Yeah, I mean, the Aatrox is already so survivable. That one's for you, Alice. Um, but if you put a Knight's Vow on him, it's going to make it even oh, more glorious. Oh, no. No, 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 no. He's level 18. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Kellen's level 13. If he if he hits one Q, oh, I think yeah. Kellen just dies. Well, Zeus is coming on in. Owner has kind of showed his hand. I think they did see Zeus, they must by the way. They there was a ward there. They saw him over the wall. They don't have engaged, though. Right, like DK doesn't have a guaranteed way to start a fight. Unless Kingan wants to flash in and go ham. But they find a big kick. Oh, the charm, not gonna hit. And it's a bit of burst damage coming out from Amy. Zeus as well on the flank, not really gonna land much. Maybe it's gotta be Showmaker that starts it off someone. But look how respectful T1 is playing. Now Zeus, yeah, he's just gonna shove. He just go for the Nexus. If they don't stop him, there's a wave. He's got TP. So if at, anything at went crazy, it. Yeah. He's going to force King in back, but this inhibitor should be gone. Ooh, I don't know. Mini? Yeah, no, it's, no, it's gone. Oh, I don't like it. It's, it's, it's a drop. Mm -hmm. And they essentially just played tower defense around the Baron, right? They, they put up a bunch of traps. They denied vision, and they said, okay, well, we're going to put you in a little bit of a suffocating position. Either you try to engage into this, or you deal with the side lane push. Big bolt wave. Currently being stacked up, Zeus is on his way. Does have the TP available. They're not just... Okay, yeah, I was about to say. Neither team really wants to do Nash here because T1 doesn't want to run the risk of someone getting 100 to 0 or kicked into them or a big Maganar hitting them. And DK don't because what well, we already saw. Goom's <laughs> build. He's full build! Yeah. Full of Fality build. Those Qs really sting, let me tell you. Wardstone now also done here for Kellen. Not an item we see often, but an item I do really enjoy. Yeah. They just can't make any missteps, is the problem. Whereas T1, like, owner can just walk forward. Forward? Like, slightly, and they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, okay. Hold yeah, on. Uh, Calm down, buddy. Yeah, we saw what happened when aiming walk too far forward. Doesn't work. Showmaker. I think against a lesser team, you might be able to get, like, a great flash hold angle, but against T1. They're not going to give you one for free. What might happen, though, is that DK take mid prio and then run towards Baron, and then T1 is going to feign that they contest the Drake. Maybe they just give up Soul, and it's like, we don't care about the Soul, we just want Baron. Could be an angle as well. <laughs> Either team is just waiting, looking for just the slightest opportunity. Remember when I said that they would flip Baron again? Yeah, no, you were right. I should have listened. Yeah. Ah, surely this time it'll be fine. We're gonna flip Baron, it's fine. The TP's in. Just right. execute better, just smite, outsmite the Rel. You can do it. Lucid takes a decent chunk of damage, but they have marked Wait, Zeus oh. here. Okay, he's gonna 1v5. Which is very important. World Ender taken out here. Showmaker's taking more damage. Jesus, that R is pretty huge. It's now owner desperate to try to save him. It's not gonna work out. And now, a bit out of position. Showmaker, though, is solo as well. Owner does take him out here. As the damage coming out on the poke from Faker and Gumas, huge the Meganar, it's desperate, it's not good enough. And the health bars just melt on the side of DK as everybody's gonna be cleaned up here on the back side of this fight. Aiming does do quite a nice amount at the end, but it's too little and it's too late. T1 with that team fight win will push for the 2-0. All according to Plant, quick 2-0. Nothing to see here, Veldes as T1 make their march towards the Nexus. I learned something today. <laughs> I just don't know what. I just don't know we what. We learned a lot today. Um, we just don't know what it was. Uh, that was the 2-0 from T1. And it wasn't clean, but they got there in the end. The Aatrox, the Ari, the Lethality, Caitlyn, being massive forces in the late game. Thought DK had a chance, you know, they they caught out uh, Zeus in the side lane. 
but the follow-up there from T1 was was fast enough, right? Zeus did go down, but uh, eventually even Faker was really pumping out the damage in the end of that one. And uh, wins a win, 2-0. This game kind of broke my brain. A Faker or Guma? Like Guma just pressed R. I guess it's Faker. He missed a lot. He, he missed a lot, but he did a lot of damage as well. He did. I think he's gonna have a pretty big uh, damage bar. So yeah, if you want to play it safe there, he didn't make a lot of mistakes, right? Like there were some missed charms, but overall he was just pretty solid. Um, <laughs> just said, is this the T1 w victory? It was. I'm not sure why that's an error message though. Um, either way, a win's a win. And Guma doesn't have a... Wait, he does. <laughs> oh, with the roll though, and the yeah. cameraman! Love that. Uh, Guma pulling out the Lethality Kaelin. I actually was really happy to see it. I thought it was cool. One of our LCK <laughs> observers is a really... Uh, was, was a very early adopter on that as well. It's like, yeah. oh guys, it's, it's super broken. And in that game, you know what? It looked great. I don't know if someone else could have tanked that final shot for Showmaker, because if he stays alive, maybe they have the necessary sustained DPS, but going that late with a composition with no frontline was always going to be tough. I think T1 also played really well around King, and specifically in the final fight, he wasn't really able to find anything big. So yes, he played two games at Aatrox, and it started even better than last game. Yeah, it definitely did. Uh, the last game, obviously, the Renekton was a big issue. Uh, it started off good for DK. And uh, <laughs> still. There's, there's always a moment in DK games. There was the the one where Kingen, remember, was playing a Volibear and a Dove yeah. bot. That's one where, where like the timeline diverges. Here it was, it was I think this one, uh, or the one where it's the one after this, isn't it? Yeah, the one where Rel gets on top of yeah. aiming. Yeah, where they because they lose soul off the back of that. Or maybe it was this. Or this. <laughs> but but this, the, I think the big difference. No. Even though, obviously, not even even in challengers that would be a, a play that you shouldn't make. But this didn't lead to a whole lot. This though, I think this was. Yeah. Yeah. Not able to flash away. Just got a flash earlier, I guess. Because T1 closed the distance so quickly. And yeah, then DK, they got very desperate. They tried to flip against Sorel, who got in the pit for free.